Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to what's making news, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And even though a little bit of sun was visible today, this one kind of a shade sun mix as we look down from our Wenatchee Heights SkyFi Tower camera, the overriding weather feature cold and it was very cold today we were over 20 degrees below where we should be and if you think we're close to all-time records we're really not our coldest high temperature record was uh, in Wenatchee is minus seven set back in 1968 and our oldest coldest overnight low temperature 21 below also set in 1968 we will get cold but not quite that cold and we'll talk more weather coming up a little bit later on and now, a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. An East Wenatchee man was taken to Central Washington Hospital early this morning with burn injuries suffered in a motorhome fire in the 2400 block of Sunset Highway. A former Confluence Health cancer physician has pleaded guilty to two charges of violating protective orders granted to his estranged wife. And severe cold and icy conditions led some agencies to close or shorten their working hours this week. But first, our top story tonight, a 42-year-old man suspected of pointing a handgun at two different people was arrested after a standoff Christmas afternoon in Manson. Jimmy Madrid was booked into the Chelan County Jail on charges of first-degree assault and unlawful possession of a handgun. Chelan County Sheriff's deputies first responded at 9.20 a.m. to do a disturbance off Highway 97A in Eniat, where the suspect had reportedly pointed a handgun at another person. The man had left the area, but less than an hour later, the Sheriff's Office received another report of a man of the same description at Mill Bay Casino in Manson, again pointing a handgun. The vehicle identified in both incidents was located just before 1 p.m. outside a home on North Harris Avenue in Manson. The sheriff's office said with the assistance with, from the Washington State Patrol, the home was surrounded and more than two hours later, Madrid walked out of the van in the backyard and surrendered. An East Wenatchee man was taken to Central Washington Hospital early this morning with burn injuries suffered in a motorhome fire in the 2400 block of Sunset Highway. The identity of the man has not yet been released, but Sean Ballard of Ballard Ambulance said his injuries were minor and the man was in stable condition. Fire District Spokeswoman Kay McKellar said the fire was reported about 2.40 a.m. and firefighters from both Douglas County Fire District 2 and Chelan County Fire District 1 responded to find the RV fully engulfed. McKellar said the victim told firefighters a space heater caused the fire, but the fire district has not yet confirmed that. She said a dog reportedly escaped the blaze, but has gone missing. Firefighters from both districts were also called out Sunday night about 6.30 for a workshop fire at a home in the 1500 block of Western Avenue in Wenatchee. The two-alarm fire led to the closure of Western Avenue near Rotary Park for a short time. The fire in the 50 by 50 foot wood shop was stopped before spreading to the nearby home. McKellar said the shop was destroyed, but there were no injuries. The cause of that fire has not yet been determined. A former Confluence Health cancer physician has pleaded guilty to two charges of violating protective orders granted to his estranged wife during divorce proceedings. 37-year-old Dr. Tyler Buckley was facing felony counts of computer trespass and witness intimidation, plus a misdemeanor charge of fourth-degree assault. Chelan County prosecutors dismissed those more serious charges after Buckley's plea on December 13th. He received a suspended sentence in district court, plus a $350 fine and two years of supervised probation. Police said Buckley had shoved and injured his wife and loitered near her workplace in violation of the protective order. In his plea, Buckley admitted only to texting and phoning his wife while he was barred from doing so by a judge's order. However, Confluence Health said he also used his access as a staff oncology physician to look up his wife's medical records in violation of patient privacy and hospital policy. He resigned from Confluence last April. 
Well, a heads up before we go to break, severe cold and icy conditions has led some agencies to close or shorten their working hours this week. Among them, Confluence Health's COVID-19 outreach that will operate on special hours. COVID testing at the Health System's Emerson Street building will only be held from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. through Thursday, and then from 10 to noon on Friday. Normally, that drive through station opens at about 7.30 a.m. daily. For testing appointments, call the Confluence COVID hotline at 663-8711. Coming up next, bad parking habits in the tourist-heavy town of Leavenworth earned a rebuke on Christmas Day from the State Department of Transportation. Former East Wenatchee Municipal Judge Chansey Crowell has a new post, this one in Okanagan County. And first responders from throughout the area converged on Central Washington Hospital on Christmas Day as a show of support for patients having to spend the holiday away from their families. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Nine one one. What is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me. It's my husband. I think he's had an issue. There's something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. Not. Okay. Take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. Rivercom means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. When it comes to finding a memory care community, you want the very best. You want to know that your loved one is safe and receiving compassionate care in a loving environment. Fieldstone Memory Care is an innovative assisted living community designed for those with Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's disease. You'll find a community specifically designed to enrich residents' lives. The Fieldstone team is here to help you navigate the important decisions you face when a loved one has dementia or Alzheimer's. Welcome home to Fieldstone. Ever wonder what it takes for wild birds to survive the longer, colder nights of winter? They can't just turn up the thermostat or throw on an extra blanket. Winter Super Blend from Wild Birds Unlimited provides a super boost of energy and fat, essential for winter survival. Stop by our store to learn how you can help the birds this season and how you can attract more beautiful birds to your yard. Wild Birds Unlimited. More birds, more joy. Welcome back. In another news, bad parking habits in the tourist-heavy town of Leavenworth earned a rebuke on Christmas Day from the State Department of Transportation. With downtown parking at a premium, visitors decided to park in a right-hand turn lane along Highway 2. This despite a large warning sign put in place by the city after the problem began earlier in the week. State and local officials warn that such parking jobs are illegal and run the risk of towing. Leavenworth operates four paid parking lots and three free lots with metered parking stalls around the downtown area. Former East Wenatchee Mun Municipal Judge Chansey Crowell has a new post, this one in Okanagan County. In mid-December, mid -December, county commissioners approved Crowell as the new district court judge, replacing former judge Robert Grimm. He was one of three applicants for the new job. Crowell was the city judge in East Wenatchee cases for 12 years until the mayor and council allowed his contracts to lapse at the end of this month. State law requires him to establish residency in Okanagan County. First responders from the, throughout the area converged on Central Washington Hospital on Christmas Day as a show of support for patients having to spend the holiday away from their families. Called the Skyly Ray Parade of Lights in honor of the stillborn child of a law enforcement officer, the lights-only procession included vehicles from fire and police departments in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee, the Washington State Patrol, Ballard Ambulance, and tow trucks. Organizers said the silent show of support was not only for people being treated at the hospital, but also for those caring for them. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Mary 
Roberts of Wenatchee believes a clean home is a happy home. Mary Maids provides holiday cleaning services to cheer about. Don't let the seasonal cleaning ruin the festive fun. Mary Maids can simplify your life at a great value. It's never too soon to start planning a holiday perfect home. Mary Maids of Wenatchee happily offers a worry-free guarantee. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Call Mary Maids today. Raising a family may have seemed overwhelming to your parents, but they weren't. Coach, teacher, life guide, caregiver. Family takes care of family. And as the circle of life continues, you now are their caregiver. It may seem overwhelming, but we're here to help you find the support services necessary so you can provide quality care to your elders. Call Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington at 1-800-572-4459. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 has yet to really take hold in Washington, but hospital officials say when it does, it could be a major challenge for health systems. Dr. Jason Lake, Chief Medical Officer of Confluence Health, was among hospital health leaders from around the state who participated in a Washington Hospital Association press briefing on Thursday. In tonight's feature story, he says staffing shortages and a possible increase in the need for COVID testing could hamper the response to an Omicron surge. From a staffing uh, standpoint, it continues to be very challenging. We continue to have high vacancy rates. We have over 110 nurse openings, which is about 18 and a half percent of our total inpatient nurses. We have a lot of CNA and respiratory therapy openings as well. We did benefit from the Department of Defense team, which uh, provided us with 20 staff in the month of November, but then they left. We do still have about 35 staff through the ACI and their contract with the Department of Health. Um, so we're really happy to have those folks through February um, because that's allowing some of our uh, our permanent staff to, to get a little rest and relaxation that's needed. We still do have over 60 travelers in our inpatient facilities. And really we're worried about a possible Omicron surge. We're worried about our ability to accommodate and increase testing. We're really worried about its effects on our staff. And if, um, if our staff start getting infected, uh, how are we going to be able to adequately staff our beds? Um, so really wanna, again, encourage everyone to get vaccinated, get their boosters. Um, it's very easy, obviously, to let your guard down during the holiday seasons when you want to gather with friends and family. That's something that we all cherish. Uh, but the downstream impacts to our health system could be significant if we do let our guard down. So I think we have to take all those protective measures um, that we know are very effective in, in preventing the transmission of this. I, I do have concerns just about the logistics and our ability to accommodate a significant increase in testing demand. Um, you know, as we enter the respiratory virus season and with uh, the likelihood that Omicron may uh, have a different uh, or more widely variable uh, degree of symptoms in patients. So a lot of patients with mild symptoms, and they don't know if it's the regular cold or COVID, and we as, as a community health standpoint want to know if it's COVID so we can isolate those people accordingly. Um, and then also we have new OSHA guidelines that are supposed to take effect in January, where large employers, um, if they have unvaccinated individuals because they have an exemption, um, have to have a testing regimen for those employees to be able to go to work. And those large employers, at least in our region, are looking um, to partner with someone to help them in that testing uh, capacity. And, and we as a health system, we have to focus primarily on um, 
sick people and testing those. So I'm not sure we can partner with those large employers just for screening um, testing for them to go to work. So, so we're trying to figure out how to um, navigate this, you know, the likely significant increase in testing demand that may happen over the next few weeks. Washington weather forecast. Hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and hopefully a day off or two in there. But weather really wasn't a big deal over the weekend. We did have some light snow flurries both on Christmas Eve and then Christmas night as well. Didn't amount to a whole lot, but we didn't need much more. We're still very white around North Central Washington. And I'll tell you what, it was a cold one today. That's for sure. Unofficially, 10 degrees our official high te or unofficial high temperature today we started out at one degree and let's jump right down here that ties our record low temperature set back in 1996 our normal high is 32 degrees so you can see well below that and our normal low 23 and yes well below that as well by the way record high wouldn't that be nice right now 57 degrees set back in 1980 sunrise this morning was 7:48, and the sun set this afternoon at 417. Let's take a peek at those Tuesday temperatures and I wish I could tell you we're going to see some improvements tomorrow. I guess they're an improvement compared to 10 today but not much warmer. 17s for Moses Lake, Afreda and Quincy. 15 down in Ellensburg. 16 the high temperature tomorrow. We're hoping here in the Wenatchee area, 14 in Leavenworth, 16 in Chelan, and 16 as well in the Omak, Tenasket, and Okanagan area to our north. As we take a look now at our surface loop, mostly cloudy skies by tonight. It is going to be a very cold one. Here's our area of low pressure that brought a little bit of snow shower activity, mainly into western and southwestern Washington. But as I mentioned, it's going to get cold tonight with lows around 5 degrees. For Tuesday, mostly sunny skies. Well, that be nice, but unfortunately, it's going to be a mirage. <laughs> Cold temperatures, highs only in the mid-teens for Tuesday, as we mentioned. Increasing clouds Wednesday. We'll see a pretty sunny start to the day and then clouds by afternoon. Going to remain cold with highs only in the mid-teens for Wednesday. And then an area of low pressure that's moving down from Canada late in the day on Wednesday. Here it comes on Thursday and will park itself right over the Spokane area. That'll bring us a 60% chance of snow on Thursday. A little warmer too with high temperatures Thursday near 20 degrees. As we get you into the end of the week on Friday, partly cloudy skies New Year's Eve it'll be chilly high temperatures in the low 20s for New Year's Eve this is during the day and as we get to about midnight or so it will cool off a bit with temperatures at midnight probably around 10 to 12 degrees New Year's Day then and Happy New Year's mostly cloudy it will still be chilly with high temperatures near only 20 degrees and that's about 12 degrees below where we should be on Sunday at the end of our forecast Look at this area of low pressure spinning its way our direction out in the Pacific. That'll bring us a 50% chance of snow late in the day on Sunday. A little bit better temperature wise though with highs on Sunday in the mid 20s. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast tonight. Three degrees, our overnight low, 16 tomorrow, five overnight on Tuesday. Same low as we get into Wednesday, 15 degrees our high. And then we get a little bit snowy again as we get into Thursday, cloudy, 20 degrees our high, 22 on Friday, 20 degrees as we start off our weekend on Saturday. And of course, that's New Year's Day. Uh, it will be a bit chilly. And then on Sunday, cloudy skies, a 50% chance of snow with a high temperature then right around 25 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. I'm Dr. Wayne Latimer. I'm a chiropractic physician. I have postgraduate certifications in both whiplash, trauma, and rehab, as well as sports medicine. The location is great. The light and the visibility, the 17-foot ceilings are fantastic. You can go into a lot of clinics, and it's very clinical. People really like the spa environment, so my whole premise was take a spa environment, add the very serious rehab, and give people an enjoyable way to get better over time.
Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. You can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new Artesian Spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy Monday to you. Hope you had a good holiday weekend. It was another case of shoulda, woulda, coulda for the Seahawks Sunday as they stumbled against the Bears, falling 25-24. Seattle let a 10-point fourth quarter lead slip away in the snow at Lumen Field as third-string quarterback Nick Foles led Chicago to the victory, scoring a touchdown and two-point conversion with a minute one left in the game. That was the difference. The de dejected, that is, Pete Carroll says, it was another case of a game the Seahawks should have won that got away from them. Well, that was about as disappointing a loss as we've had. Um, we uh, were in control in so many ways in that game to go win it and put it away, and we just never did, and let them stay alive, and, and uh, they, they found a way to make their plays. And, uh, you know, we had to do some stuff to, to give them that opportunity, and they, they took advantage of it and give them credit. They've been struggling all year, too, and, and uh, it's a big win for those guys. Um, I feel like I, I, I have to do more. I have to I feel I mean, at a time like this, I feel like I got to find ways to help our guys more so that we don't get in a situation where we even give them a chance. Um, and uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out how I can help and get us cleaner right down the stretch and, and win a football game and not give something up and the penalty that we get and all that kind of stuff. We get things that we can do better. We got to do better. And um, I'm asking them to do the same thing. Seattle converted just three of 10 third down opportunities and let the Bears win the time of possession battle 31 minutes to 28. Carroll says it's a theme he hates to see bite his team once again. But the fact that, you know, they get more first downs than us and, and uh, um, it's 38, 20 something or, you know, whatever it was in the time of possession, that, that's, that's been, that's been, you know, pretty constant and that's not, that's not a good way to be playing. But we, you know, I, I liked our balance, you know, that we were able to run the ball and, and mix it. Um, we had a couple good touchdown passes, um, but we still came out three out of ten on third down again, you know, which is the, you know, that's just not good enough execution. We got to be better there. And when you look at the other side of it, you know, we went back to the old ways. We were seven out of 14, you know, and we've been so much better than that uh, throughout most of the year. And then to come back to that really pisses me off because that's not the way we want to play. Russell Wilson threw two touchdown passes on the day, but completed just 16 of his 27 throws and suffered two costly sacks. He says Seattle left a W out on the field Sunday. And honestly, this, this game, you know, we should have definitely had this one. Um, the way we were playing, the way that uh, I felt like we were moving the ball. Rashad Penny had an unbelievable game. The line was blocking their butts off. Um, see DK score that touchdown, that was huge. Um, you know, other guys, Gerald, get in the end zone. That was awesome. Um, we had some really great things, too. DJ Dallas had another great game. You know, there's some, some amazing great pieces that we did, you know, did things. He had a great time. He did a great job running the ball, you know, made some couple plays uh, on offense, and then obviously his special teams efforts. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that um, as a collective effort, we could have we could have finished better. Wilson was sacked on a crucial third down in the fourth quarter that resulted in a missed field goal and was four of seven for 25 yards in three fourth quarter possessions. The 10th year Seahawks says he'll just focus on getting better. We all have to be better, man. I mean, we all, we all want to be better. Um, I think, you know, I want to be better every day. I want to be the, the best at it. I want to continue to work at it. I think we all want to get, get better at it. I think every player in that locker room, um, every coach and everything else. And so um, the only way to get better is, is to is to be able to stay focused on what's what's right right next ahead of us. You know, and that's that's going to be tomorrow morning um, and we wake up if God willing, we wake up and to me tomorrow morning that we we get to do it and, and focus on that. And I think it's the only way to get better. And so, um, like I said, this season has been disappointing for sure, you know, in, in, that, in that sense. But, um, you know, uh, Despite the disappointments, you know, in, in sports and life and, and anything, you know, uh, I'm grateful that God gave me the opportunity to play it and to do it again. Nick Foles played his first game of the NFL season for Chicago on Sunday, leading the Bears from behind in the victory. Coach Carroll says he wasn't surprised by the play of the former Super Bowl MVP. 
you know, he he kind of did what, what Nick does. You know, I mean, he he uh, he makes plays. You know, and and he came through for them. You know, he was under duress. And we were rushing well. Uh, we had coverage on guys, and, and but when it came down to it, you know, he has been a playmaker. You know, throughout his career, and he did it today. The, the throw to Jimmy and the throw and the, and the two point conversion was ri- ridiculously perfect. And and uh, he he did it. You know, and we had guys around him when it happened too. And, you know, got to give him credit. He's he's. That's not a surprise that Nick makes plays like that. He's been doing it. And I was worried about the fact that he was coming in the game, you know, as we, when we got that, just knowing and having respect for the game, the game that he's always been able to present. Officially eliminated for the playoffs, Seattle has one more home game Sunday against the 2-12 and 1 Detroit Lions. That'll be at 125 in the afternoon on Fox. Seattle Kraken spent the holiday week along with the rest of the NHL in a COVID shutdown. They'll try to get back on the ice Wednesday at home against the Philadelphia Flyers. The league shutdown means it will be 11 days between games for the Kraken. Coach Dave Haxtall says that's why it's so important to get good work on the ice when they have the chance. Like I said, that's probably that's the biggest thing, and that's why I mentioned you know to Ryan's uh, you know to you know my point there is that's that's where our focus needs to be right now is is a couple of great days of practice you know we've been off for a significant amount of time it's it's a little bit more time than everybody is accustomed to um so these practices are really important regardless of who's available and who is not available um you know the practices are really important to uh, to make sure uh we get some rhythm back and get uh you know get the level of our game back uh to uh, to where it needs to be going into game action now, Seattle only had 15 players skating in Sunday's practice with several outs on the COVID reserve list. Coach Haxtall says that always plays a part in team chemistry. Everybody has to work real hard at it. Coaches have to be uh, well prepared and organized. Uh, players have to dig in um, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and make sure that they are uh, in tune with everything and understanding everything. Um, and then you have to work, you know, obviously some of the, you know, the issues when you, when you have um, players in and out of the lineup, some of the chemistry issues. Uh, you have to really work hard to to rise above those as well, um, and that's where you know again back to you know practice time and the importance of it is uh, is great. If all things remain equal, the Kraken and Flyers will take to the ice at Climate Pledge Arena Wednesday at seven. You can watch it on Root Sports Northwest. Wenatchee well, Wild will be back at practice this week as they'll host Prince George at year end end of the week. Wenatchee well, rode a five game winning streak into the holiday break. Spruce Kings will be in town for a six o'clock game on Thursday. Seven oh five. They'll drop tr- puck Friday uh, to ring in the new year. Also, high school basketball. Silas High School, in fact, in Tacoma, the site for the T Town Throwdown Tournament. Over the next three days, the Wenatchee Panther boys uh, played Foss earlier this morning. Don't have a score on that one yet. Eastmont, a fill-in team for another that dropped out. So they'll play either Federal Way or Newport tomorrow at 345. Wenatchee face either Franklin Pierce or Emerald Ridge tomorrow at 530. That's for the Sports News. Grant, back to you. Thanks a bunch, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Kuntz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Join me for a Tuesday edition. Of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we will have your latest weather forecast. When it gets this cold, it affects everybody. I'll let you know what's going on weather-wise as we get your Tuesday going. We'll also take you up to the major mountain passes. We'll have news. We'll have sports. We have everything you need to get your Tuesday going. The last Tuesday of 2021. Get it going the right way, which is right here with Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We'll be live and local tomorrow at 7 a.m. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. Uh, For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Join us each week as the NCW Tech Alliance team networks with individuals driving change in technology, entrepreneurship, and STEM education. Their nonprofit mission is to connect people and technology resources to create a thriving community. Get inspired, engaged, and networked right here on the NCW Life Channel.